Hello and welcome to Smash Writing. And today, this is the other half of Lucas Smith's request uh, pertaining to the movie Mandy. If you have a movie that you would like me to review or discuss, drop it in the comments below. Going into Mandy, I didn't know much about this movie. I knew that it was hyper-violent and it stars Nicolas Cage. And that was about all I knew about Mandy going into it. So with that in mind, let's dive in and talk about how it was, shall we? This movie opens up with a quote. It says, When I die, bury me deep. Lay two speakers on my feet. Wrap some headphones around my head. And rock and roll me when I am dead. And then we go to a lumberjack cutting down some trees. He gets on a helicopter and flies off heading home. And we see... The woman, she's smoking a bit and drawing a detailed looking painting, picture, painting, one of the two. Their names are Red and Mandy. They live alone out in the woods, which is always a great sign. But they're just trying to live their lives peacefully and enjoy each other's company kind of deal. Right? I'll agree. And we get a long showing of them just doing their thing out in the woods. And I will agree to the one part. Jupiter is the best planet. But we jump ahead to the uh, main villains of this group. A group called the Children of the New Dawn. A religious centric cult led by a man named Jeremiah. He is obsessed with someone and he wants her in his life. And he calls her Brother Swan. And he de demands that he goes and gets her, this woman. But not before, he, uh, before Swan can leave he wants time with Lucy. And by the looks of it I think Lucy's his wife. But he gives in, sends Lucy in, and Brother Swan and this other guy, they call in these three bikers. Now, I think it's three, but at the same time, it could be four. I could have miscounted later on, but I'm going to say three bikers. That would be a lot more intimidating if I could actually see them. But they're all dressed up in, like, tight leather and gore-looking kind of deal. One is just covered in nails. Which can't be practical. If he falls over, he's sticking to the ground. He's not getting back up again. But, regardless of that, they go to, uh... And, of course, the woman, as it turns out, is Mandy. They go, and they kidnap Red and Mandy. Red gets tied up somewhere. Mandy is brought to the family, kind of deal. And it looks like they're all at the cabin. They're at Red and Mandy's cabin. And they drug Mandy, and they bring her before Jeremiah, who... Is, goes on his ramble and he puts on music that he wrote himself about how great Jeremiah is and how he is the chosen one from Jesus All of, and he asks her to come and make love to him and she starts laughing mostly at his shitty song which I can hardly hear because this is all happening from a drug state she's in but you can tell this is a shitty song which sends him into a fit and we go see uh Red, who's, bar, who's bound by barbed wire in the backyard. And uh, Jeremiah, Swan, and Lucy come out. And he shows he shows Red what true love really means by having Lucy play a game of Russian roulette with herself. But she does get blank on it. And they decide that she needs to be cleansed by... Mandy needs to be cleansed by fire. And they bring her up, wrapped in a sleeping bag, and they hang her up on this swing set and force him to watch her be burned alive inside of this and then they go off on their own and it's very important for you to know this this is a two hour movie everything that I've just talked about is the first hour this movie takes its time on everything but at this point Red is now infuriated he breaks he manages to break free and he goes into the house, and he passes out. And he has this animated dream of her screaming out as an animated corpse. And he loses it in the bathroom. He's forcing himself to chug down this bottle of booze, and he is screaming and crying and losing his mind. Then we jump to him showing up this old trailer. He's there to pick up the Reaper. Which was really interesting because uh, the Reaper comes for you the Reaper coming is a line she actually said to him, said to uh, Jeremiah during her drugged out state before she laughed at him. And 
it's an old army buddy of his who has this crossbow called the Reaper. And he gives him these special bolts as long as he uses it for the right reasons. And he knows that this, he's going to be hunting someone. And the red breaks down and he talks about what happened a little bit. And his army buddy tells him where to find these bikers. And he shoots the one covered in nails. But then he tries to run him over and flips his car, I'm guessing, off of all the nails in him. And he wakes up, tied up again. He's uh, One hand is nailed to the floor and the other is shackled to the handcuff. But he rips the pipe free and beats the guy into like this pit that he's next to. And then from there it's taking everybody out. The one guy, it's really hard to tell what gets him. Another guy he snaps the neck of. He then tries some cocaine and tries this other drug to get some real smashed. And then he goes outside and there's and one guy watching his car burning. And uh, he shoots him in the head with a bolt and it does nothing. So fist fight pursues and he ends up getting taken out by kind of catching him on fire. When he starts mocking Mandy, Mandy's demise but sets him on fire and then beheads him with the battle axe he made before this all started. And then it's off to trying to find the rest of the family. And it leads him to the chemist first, who has this random tiger. And the chemist frees the tiger, and he puts up no fight. He's like, oh, I'm not doing this. Go north. You'll find them north. So north he tracks. And he finds... Uh, a couple of the other ones he takes out. One guy gets a flying battle axe to the head. Before the flying battle axe, he does find Brother Swan and Lucy. And he uh, stop, he uh, takes out their wills with these uh, tacks. And he shoves the one end of the battle axe into Swan's mouth and pretty much makes him choke to death on it. But he lets Lucy go. And he lets Lucy go because she's one of the only family members you could tell during the burning does not want to be doing this. And he lets her go. And then one of the other ones gets taken out with a flying battle axe. Then we get a uh, chainsaw battle between him and another member. And it would be a bit more entertaining if I didn't just see the chainsaw fight from Phantasm 2 because it's the same premise. Red has a small chainsaw, the guy has a bigger chainsaw. And in the end, uh, the big guy gets pulled down on top of the one chainsaw with the chain. And then it's on to the church itself. It's like this small pyramid kind of deal. And he runs into the older woman who tries to seduce him. And then we cut the black and we see Jeremiah in this red light room. And he gets the old woman's head thrown at him. And then Red enters the room. And Jeremiah's going on about how nobody can touch him. He's been chosen by God. And all of that fades away when Red grabs him by the face. And in comes the begging and the bleeding and the bargaining. Uh, none of that, all of that falls on dead ears though as Red crushes his skull. And he goes, he gets in his car, he starts driving away, and he starts hallucinating that Mandy is there with him, smiling. And we get a great shot of the deranged, blood-soaked Nick Clage just smiling back at her. And we cut the black, and that is Mandy. This movie is... Very up and down. Very up and down. Let's talk about a pro. Nicolas Cage actually feels like he really kills this role as this guy who's just coming apart. He's losing it. Like, I'd seen the gif of him in the bathroom before, but actually getting the context of the scenes, that scene was actually incredible. Of uh, this man just breaking down from what he's seen, and he's losing his mind, and he's crying, and he's chugging down this alcohol. And it was actually a really powerful scene, and Nicholas Cage really killed that scene. As he does throughout this entire movie, I think Nicholas Cage does shine throughout. The color scheme in this movie is very up and down, with far, far more downs than ups. Like, there are some really nice lit shots in the nighttime. And the drugged out scene is cool for about five seconds. But that scene lasts about seven minutes, it feels like. And it really just starts the lighting in this from the reds and the flashing greens and just the n soundtrack, we'll call it, I guess. 
from music to just sounds, this movie is a can be a real headache to watch sometimes. And I get what they're going for. Oh, it's not for me. This movie's just not the uh, lighting and like the lighting and the sounds in this movie is just headache inducing. Uh, the acting is really good. I really like the guy they got for the chemist. If they would have swapped the chemist for Jeremiah, I would have really enjoyed it a bunch more because I thought the chemist was... The actor who plays the chemist was fantastic. Tons of charisma. Especially him bouncing off of Nicolas Cage that much more. Yes, yes please. There are long stretches in this movie where nothing happens at all. He doesn't even begin his rampage until like an hour and 16 minutes in this movie. And we're talking, this movie is only two hours long. It takes, like I said, the kidnapping doesn't take place for like the 38 minute marker. And then from the kidnapping to the fire death, it's almost 20 minutes. This movie just, they, they don't let, they let everything play out. Everything plays out to the point of, like, it's almost too much. But surprisingly, despite all of that, this movie does go by quick. It goes by real quick. And it becomes uh, so hard to decide if this is actually a good movie or a pain in the ass movie. Because despite the fact that nothing happens for large chunks of this movie, it does fly. It does fly, which is insane. I was really generous toward It Follows because I understood, you know, what's going on with It Follows. Uh, this movie, though, and the fact that nothing happens at all for long stretches of this movie, just nothing happens. And the colors, it's way too much. It went way too hard with these colors. I'm going to give it a C minus. I'll give it a C minus. There are good bits in this movie that can be enjoyed for the large part. Not for me. Uh, thank you, though, for the two suggestions. They were both, both first-time watches for me. And despite the local grades and the negatives, I had a good time in, with them both. So here's the more people commenting, more, commenting me more movies to watch. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.